Well, good morning to you. It is Wednesday, July the 28th, 29th. Yeah, 29th. Yesterday was the 28th. Glad to have you with us. This is up to the minute. We've got your HCC news and information over the next half hour. Stick around for our special guest. But first, I want to interview, you know, Brittany's on vacation all this week. So we've got a rotating uh, uh, list of co-hosts that are joining me this week. Today, it's one of our own HCC TV employees, Cayo de Aragon. Kayo, it is great to have you with us. Yeah, now tell everybody what you do for HCC TV. Thank you, Todd. So I'm actually hosting the uh, HCC TV Student Lounge, which is a show done by HCC students for HCC students. So you guys should definitely check that out. We are growing our audience and the same thing with Up To The Minute. Make sure you share the videos, you know, go to your Facebook page, YouTube, and take a look because we have great content coming up soon. That's right. We want you to follow us in all of our social media. That's how we uh, uh, know you're out there. And if you see this post, share it. Make sure as many people can get caught up uh, with the HCC news and information. Kayo, stick around. We're going to have more with you in a little while. We've got a couple of guests today. Of course, it's Wednesdays. That means a meeting with HCC Police Chief Greg Cunningham. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Todd. How's everybody going today? We're doing great, and it's Wednesday as well. Um, it's good to see you with us again. We'll uh, we'll be with you in just a moment. But a first, problem. I want to introduce our first guest, Dr. Mehmet Argen. He is the Dean of Global Energy Center of Excellence for HCC. And uh, Dr. Argen, you are based out at HCC Northeast. Yes, good morning, Pat. Thanks for having me in your show. We appreciate you being here. Why don't you first off, um, some, many of us who work for HCC are familiar with your Global Energy Center of Excellence, but for folks who aren't familiar with that Center of Excellence, tell us exactly what it encompasses. Yes, uh, Global Energy Center of Excellence actually trains and educates skilled workers for energy, oil and gas, manufacturing and medical industries. At Global Energy COE, we have workforce programs and continuing education programs. Under workforce programs, we have four different programs, including electronics engineering technology, process technology, petroleum engineering technology, implementation and control engineering technology. And under continuing education, uh, the name of the continuing education program is industrial technology and energy. Currently, we have scaffold builder, uh, OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and Big One programs. Let me ask you this, because um, uh, obviously the oil industry has been hit, um, even before COVID started, the oil industry was taking a hit. Um, are there jobs available right now? If you're training for these careers, are these going to be essential jobs as we move into this new normal? Well, we have to keep in mind that the oil industry has seen these booms and busts in its history. It's the nature of the oil and gas industry. But this time we had an extra hit due to coronavirus. Uh, the oil prices has been declining globally. It's not only in US, it was declining globally. And when the countries and the states had these stay at home orders, people stopped driving and the planes stopped flying. And as the result, I mean, the demand goes down and supply keeps increasing. And at some point, oil producers said, you know, let's find some buyers and sell them our, our products with extra fee. And they start paying extra for their, uh, you know, extra uh, oils because they didn't have any storage. They said, let's close down our wells and uh, let's wait until after the market is recovering. Now, let me tell you this. This recession, we, we've seen this recession back in 80s and, right. and 2006, 2008 period. But the market always fluctuates in oil and gas industry. We have recently seen some uh, efforts from the uh, oil producers and they applied for Texas Railroad Commission for uh, rig permits. It's coming back, but slowly. And this time I have noticed that our program is getting a lot of interest. Uh, especially students from petroleum engineering technology background, they want to come to our program. But they're a little bit cautious as we don't know what's going to happen in six months or in a year or in two, two years. We don't know where, whether there will be a vaccine to cure this COVID-19 or not. But the companies are still posting positions. 
I mean, the job market is still available, but it's not that much. We see companies laying off or furloughing employees, but it's coming back slowly. Let me ask you this, um, you know, on uh, the middle of March, you know, right around spring break, HCC went off for spring break and we really haven't returned to our campuses in a large fashion. How were you able to move your programs online and specifically, uh, were you able to come up with a plan to uh, get the lab based part of the courses to students who need to complete those? Well, since March, uh, we have been teaching our classes fully online. Uh, the spring semester was completed fully online. Summer semester was completed fully online. Now we're getting ready for the fall semester. We all know that there won't be any in-person classes until the first week of October. Uh, to you know, accommodate the students' needs, to be able to provide education, we actually purchased software for process technology. So students are able to uh, use the Synchronic software to simulate various scenarios, even at home, even they don't have any opportunity to do hands-on activities at campuses. We do have multi-SIM software for uh, electronics engineering technology students. We are also partnering with Digital Information Technology, COE, uh, wow. to implement VR technology in our programs as the faculty will be able to demonstrate 360 viewing of their experiments. So hopefully these, these tools will help us to you know, uh, teach the content to our students until after we come back and start teaching Welcome. in person classes. We have everything well, you that know, you would expect to, talk in a regular with, uh, classroom Admishi and engages from the, whole body uh, tracking. IT Center of Excellence um, a couple of times about this, and he talked about working specifically with COEs and yours. He mentioned as well, so you can incorporate um, some of these lab. Uh, processes through virtual reality. Do you see that being more of the wave of the future? Yes, exactly. I mean, I'm happy to work with Sean. I mean, he, he he's willing to collaborate and help us in, 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 this, in this project. I mean, VR is an emerging technology and this is the starting for us. In fact, our petroleum engineering technology has the drilling simulation. We already have the VR drilling simulation and we have been implementing and using that tool, but now we want to expand it to uh, and use it for, our, for other programs as well. And speaking of expansion, is your COE uh, have any expansion plans? I've heard that you possibly could be going across the district with certain locations. Yes, there is a demand to our programs at the northwest and southwest side of the town. Uh, that's why we want to expand the global energy programs to that area. So starting from fall semester, uh, process technology will be offering classes at the Missouri City campus and electronics and petroleum engineering technology will be offering courses at the Northwest campus. So this is our one of the short term calls. We are also introducing a data management certificate uh, through our continuing education programs. Eventually, uh, we want to um, bring a renewable and sustainable energy program primarily in wind energy and we are, we are exploring grants and we are in contact with industry partners to achieve this goal. Last thing, last thing we have as part of our expansion plan is uh, the uh, pole line worker programs that is going to be introduced as a continuing education course at the Northeast College and the distillation unit. This distillation unit is part of the Resili Resiliency Operations Center project and it is going to allow our process technology students to do more hands-on activities and be ready for the industry. Um, Mehmet, would you say your program would be also open uh, for workers who may have been laid off in the oil field industry, but want to stay in that industry because they may have been working there all their life, but they're looking to maybe get some new certifications or get retrained. Do you have, would you be able to uh, handle those short-term certifications for someone who has been uh, facing a layoff? Yes, we do have already a RIG-1 uh, certificate program, which allows the workers in industry to come back and get extra skills. Uh, in addition to that one, this data management certificate will also allow uh, you know, folks working in the petroleum industry to gain extra skills in data management, because it's, it's becoming a new norm for a lot of industries, and this industry also needs this uh, data management certification. Dr. Mehmet Argin from the HCC uh, Center of Excellence for Global Energy. Thanks for being here on the show. We appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon. Good luck in your expansion. Thank you. Thank you for having me in your show.
Absolutely. And if you'd like to more, learn more about this center of excellence, we're going to post some information, including their website address in the post for this social media webcast. So look for it later on. We're going to move across town. We've got our own chief, Greg Cunningham. He joins us every Wednesday and he's back again today. Good to see you again, chief. Good to see you, Todd. Everybody doing well over there. We are doing great. You know, it's uh, been a weird week. Um, we almost had a, uh, uh, well, a hurricane that hit us south of us could have affected us a lot more. But I imagine, you know, we talked about this last week. Everyone needs to be vigilant. We're going through COVID right now. We're in a lockdown, sort of. And we, but we need to uh, keep in mind, we're still in hurricane season. Absolutely. So first and foremost, Todd, I need to uh, take a little credit here. We called that storm last week, right? You and I were the first ones to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the second storm that's coming up, we had actually mentioned it as well. A lot of the models look like it may run up the East Coast. So if you have family or friends on the East Coast, you may want to check in with them. But again, it's a great reminder for us to, um, you know, uh, uh, take a look at our stores, make sure that we're ready to handle this thing. You know, the Saharan dust came through early in the year and, and it really tamped down the, the Caribbean. And uh, unfortunately, the last time that happened, when it came back, as it's coming back now, it kind of came back with a vengeance. Those were the years of Katrina and Rita and some really pretty, pretty serious storms. Chief, speaking of COVID, um, we've got a couple of a few testing sites around the uh, around the city on HCC campuses. What can you tell us about those? Because I know two of them involve signing up ahead of time for uh, the COVID testing. Two of them you can just show up for, and they involve the I believe uh, the northeast side, and then a couple on the southeast, and one on the north nor uh, the south side as well. Yeah, so, so the COVID testing is going on uh, on, a, on a, a, a daily basis, Monday through Friday. Um, the hours have been adjusted just a little bit to try to get those crews out of the sun a little earlier in the afternoon. So they're starting about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, and then they're running until about 1 or 2 instead of going into the deep afternoon. Um, the testing has been pretty steady, although the lines are now kind of starting to dwindle a little bit. And I'm not really sure what, what, what the cause of that is. If so many people in the community have been tested that the demand is starting to drop down now or, or exactly why, but it's, it's really kind of stabilized a little bit. So if you've not been tested, now is an awesome time to check by those places because it's not the four or five hour waits anymore. Um, Chief, are your officers out there as well to help manage the crowds? So um, actually, uh, um, we're checking by on the folks that are out there. There's one or two sites that that, that my guys actually are, are holding down posts at. But uh, HPD has been able to come back and help us out. So there's a lot of HPD officers out there working through that. And, um, you know, the one out at Northeast at our uh, Northeast College, uh, that one's been run by military people basically from the beginning. There's a couple of HPD guys out there just uh, uh, to be out there. Um, and of course, our people are checking by on them regularly and are out there as well. Chief, we've also um, seen and heard over the last month or so about city services and county services being affected by COVID with a number of first line uh, emergency workers testing positive or becoming sick. How are your, How is your staff handling? Because I know you've had some officers that have tested for COVID and have turned up positive. Yeah, and, and and candidly, so far we've only had um, we've only had one of our officers that ended up being hospitalized due to it. Um, so we've had fairly mild cases, and I'm knocking on wood right here in front of God and everybody for it. Um, we continue to see officers that get exposed from time to time. You know, maybe one or two uh, uh, um, uh, every few weeks. Um, generally, however, their exposure is coming mostly from uh, um, life, right? Their, yeah. their, their wives or their kids aren't feeling well, or they've, they've been to a family event and find out an uncle or an aunt has been exposed. Um, we've had a lot of folks that have had to take tests, but have all come back negative, or many of them have come back negative up until now. So at the end of the day, our protocols are doing pretty well to protect our people but also uh, our community has been absent, right? So our interaction with people has been significantly reduced. So I think we're in a little bit better shape than the city police or the city fire are right now. 
Chief, the, the uh, chancellor made an announcement late last week, I believe on Friday, uh, postponing in-person instruction at least uh, through the beginning of October. Um, did, did, was this something uh, that you were expecting to hear uh, with the number of cases that had been on the rise in the Houston and Harris County area? Well, Todd, as you know, the college and all of its leadership has been meeting on a regular basis, a couple of two, three times a week. And then by the time you do all the different groups, the, the conversation is happening almost daily. So I, I, had, I suspected that we weren't going to do that just because of the spike that we were having and the fact that it was it was out of uh, uh, out of control in the area. Now, everybody wearing masks and the big push over the last several weeks has had some impact and and our, our spike has kind of flattened out. So hopefully now when we begin to look at the first week of October, combined with all of the planning and cleaning protocols we've put in place, um, I'm really looking forward to getting folks back into our facilities and uh, um, and, and beginning to work on on those those labs and those those uh, uh, practicums that they need to do. Chief, we've also discussed on this show um, for the past month, month and a half, um, the protests that have happened, and in some cases, violence that's happened across the country, and you've given us a unique law enforcement perspective. I wanted to talk to you about what's going on in the Northeast, um, specifically in the Portland area, because some reports you see um, look pretty bad, and then you hear on the other coin, um, some media you'll see are saying these are peaceful protests. What's your personal take from law enforcement standpoint on what's going on in the Northwest um, and in what you're seeing? Well, so uh, unfortunately, when we first talked about it, we had talked about whether the federal uh, uh, agents that, that have been deployed was a good decision or not. And initially, I, I really wasn't in support of that. But, but what I think we're learning now is that the local governments have decided that they're not going to provide protection for some of the federal buildings and some of those things, which has which is the reason why uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, the marshals are up there now. Um, there, there, there's, there's unfortunately a breakdown. Uh, um, the local government has told police they're not allowed to use any of the control agents that they would normally use for a demonstration. And they have also pulled police back from those demonstrations. Um, now, I, I'm not a Portland resident and I don't know the local politics, so I won't say whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. But by pulling back away and, and not controlling the property damage that's going on up there, uh, especially when it came to the federal courthouse and some of those buildings, is what propagated the feds going in because the local police weren't there. Um, I, again, I, I, I can't get into, into politics for those folks and make those decisions, but Police cannot shrink away from property damage and from criminal behavior. And if and if it's by policy or if it's by will, um, they allow police to back away. Um, what you get is this, right? And and it's other police law enforcement agencies stepping in to take over that role and responsibility. So we've been very very blessed, Houston has a very healthy relationship between our, our, our public officials and, and, and um, the police department and our community. And um, I think that's why we're not having these problems. And um, I think that those continued conversations, we, we talked that it would be tough conversations to rebuild that trust with community. And Houston seems to be getting there faster than other communities are. And for that, I'm very proud. Um, we, we need to begin to have those hard conversations so that we can make things better and improve it moving down the road um, so that we don't degrade into what's happening in the Northwest. Chief, we are blessed to be here in Houston. It certainly makes you proud as to the way things are going, at least at this point. There's a lot of work to be done and, uh, and a lot of discussions to be had, but it seems like we're moving in the right direction. Chief Greg Cunningham, thanks for being here on the show on this Wednesday. It's always good to see you. And it's always a pleasure to be here, Todd. Thank you so much. And you guys have a great day, okay? You too. Stay safe, Chief. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Kayo, how's it going again? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Holding on here. 
Kyle, let me because uh, you didn't you you mentioned you were the you're the host of our uh, our newscast that we do for students. But tell everybody else you do a lot more for HCC than just uh, uh, a pretty face on TV, a host in a show. You do a lot behind the scenes. Tell everybody what you do there. Yeah, I've you know I've been working animation. I did the uh, safety learning options for the fall animation. Yeah. I also did the safety measures for the fall video. I went there to all the campus, I shot everything and I added, I came up with a video. So I also take care of this part. You know, I love shooting, I love editing, that's my passion. And I'm also in front of the camera now. So I say like, I do a little bit of everything. And you've also earned one associate's degree from HCC and you're, you're going for another, right? You all actually have a business associate's degree. I got a filmmaking, uh, certificate and i'm going for my third certificate in photography <laughs> that's great kaya well we're 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 excited to have you on board and you do great work i want to talk with you because being a student um there's some new dates for the fall schedule um now kaya you've heard the chancellor announced on friday and we were talking to the chief about this but uh august 24th the fall semester still begins but all classes will meet remotely for the first six weeks flex campus and lab based students should still enroll but will be online uh, and restricted to nine students once you do get on the campuses online on a schedule and online anytime of course those meet online and uh those will not be affected by this new announcement but the next big day is september 28th yeah I, I i've been checking out this and i think this is the right thing to do you know let's try to you know avoid the spread so i think for this point for this moment i think it's the right thing to do try to hold off and of course people need to be careful you know even though you're going to class you know you got to use mask and and then this period that you're going to be home you know make sure you do everything to not get contaminated you know let's help each other and let's be safe now, Kyle, let me ask you this. Would you prefer online on a schedule where you go to class and you interact with the instructor and, and your, your classmates, or would you prefer the online anytime where you can, you can uh, watch the class and take the class anytime to your convenience? What do you prefer? I think online on a schedule would work better for me, you know, in some situations. And I say that because if I know I can do it anytime, I may procrastinate a little bit and yeah. may push, you know, to the end of the day or maybe to the next day. So when you like schedule, you know, you got, you know, you got to be there at a certain time. So I think that will work. And I also really like the, the relationship with the professor. You know, I, li I like to talk to him. I like when your students interact because I think that's a, a better way to learn rather than just watching like a pre-made video. Now, also in the chancellor's announcement, September 28th is the faculty for faculty for in-person classes. You'll return to campus that day to prepare for face-to-face uh, -face instruction. October 1st, right now, scheduled for in-person flex campus and lab-based courses. They're scheduled to begin on that day. Everyone's required to follow safety protocols, including wearing a mask, face coverings, and passing individual screenings. You may want to get to the campus early if you are taking classes in person. Uh, um, because uh, there will be some screening processes. Decisions about support and student services reopening in person will be made closer to October 5th, but keep in mind all of our services are available virtually online, so you can get off to, uh, you can get off to a good start for the semester by neat getting your, your, uh, your financial aid in order, you can get meet with your advisor, if you need counseling, that's available as well, and that's all available online on our website at hccs.edu. The uh, chief and I went over some uh, COVID testing sites earlier. Those are open and we'll have the information in our social media post for this. Kyle, are you familiar with the jobsnowhouston.org initiative that we have? Yes, I actually did hear about it. And I think it's a, a pretty interesting thing that they are doing, you know, trying to help people with jobs, especially at this, you know, difficult time with coronavirus. A lot of people lost their jobs, but hey, you still, you still have jobs out there. You know, you're just going to look for it. That's right. And we're helping you look for those jobs and getting retained and retooled for Houston's workforce. Uh, there's about 200,000 jobs in Southeast Texas out of one and a half million Houstonians that have lost their jobs over the last uh, few months because of COVID. Well, we want to get them back into the workforce. So uh, those job training uh, sessions and the classes and the certificates that you can learn are concentrated on five fields, healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, IT, and construction. 
Foundation. For more information, log on to jobsnowhouston.org. Weekly enrollment information sessions. Um, when you first came here, Kayo, I imagine you probably had to take an information session and you probably took it face to face. Yes, I did take a face to face. And uh, I had actually for international students, we have orientation where they give all the information regarding like how many classes you need to take about working. And, and it was a pretty interesting orientation. Honestly, I learned a lot from it, but I guess from now on, you know, got to do it online, <laughs> but eventually yeah. I'll back. And the online sessions are available now. Um, you do have to take one before you uh, go to classes in the fall, and you can register at hccs.edu slash information sessions. The next one is at noon today, Wednesday, July 29th. They do hold them every week, so you can sign up for them and get your questions answered there. All if you uh, scholarship. Um, the HCC Foundation scholarship deadline is approaching. We encourage you to apply for the scholarships. Uh, it's open applications for closes on August 31st. So you got a little bit of time, but make sure you get the forms filled out. Uh, HCCSfoundation.org slash scholarships is the website, and you'll find that in this social media post as well. HCC faculty and staff, we have virtual coffee breaks. Uh, one of them is happening Thursday, tomorrow, 11 a.m., July 30th. Richard Goslin is going to be there. He's now the interim dean, social and behavioral sciences. We congratulate him on this new position, but Richard's really done so much behind the scenes. You know, Kyle, I don't know if you were involved with this story, but we did a story on Richard, and he was one of the ones that set up these virtual faculty lounges to get our faculty in, uh, trained for Canvas real quickly over the spring break. Uh, yeah, I actually spoke with him when I was doing the – the learning options for the fall because I, I do have a screenshot and actually I got from his lobby, you know, the one that he created to help people out. And I spoke with him to know more the details. And I also watched the show that you guys did with him. And that's when I got the information and I, to use on the video, which was really helpful. And I thought it was a great idea. And I heard there were so many people involved in that. That's amazing. It was amazing to get everybody trained, uh, you know, really over spring break and a, an extra week or so uh, after that to start delivering online education. Usually, of course, it takes six weeks. They did it in a matter of a couple of weeks. Great work for Richard Gosselin. Great move with uh, his new position. He's now interim dean of social and behavioral sciences. He's joining Janet May on this virtual coffee break. Check your HCC emails to register and join Janet. Grab a cup of coffee, too, because uh, it, she always puts on a good show. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Kaya, we've got a couple of guests. Uh, the chair of the Automotive Center of Excellence will join us to talk about workforce programs that provide skills-based training to help students find career paths in addition to programs that are either one or two years in length. So they're offering both certificates and associates degrees. They've got some cool stuff. Have you ever gone out to that uh, Automotive Center of Excellence out there in Northeast? Yes, I actually did. And I just loved because, you know, first it's, there's so many fancy equipment and also there's like simulations through all the, you know, I don't even know how to call it, but it's like, literally it's like a big mechanic center, but it's yeah. so, many, so much stuff in there and cars and, and you know, the simulations, like he was showing how it works, like engines and all that. And I, I was pretty amazed by the, the amount of technology they had over there. They have some incredible technology and uh, a number of partnerships we have with a number of automotive manufacturers. So we're training um, technicians that already have jobs, you know, many cases are already working at these jobs, but we're training these technicians that get certified that can go to work for like Audi or Toyota um, and, and, and start really making some serious money. I don't know if uh, you're familiar, but I know these, um, um, you know, I worked in the automotive industry for a short amount of time and those automotive techs they really do very well financially so these are high paying jobs in a short amount of time that you train for yeah i can imagine that because like it's so expensive to fix cars and things yeah. like that so it's understandable that they make good money but also like it's 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 a complicated thing i'm not gonna lie you know i don't know anything about cars so you know but once you get you know and once you get you learn and you do it of course you deserve a well-paid you know gig so 
Well, that's what they're training for out there. And it's no longer the, the cars are no longer easy to fix. They're all all controlled by computers and, and massive equipment. So it takes a very highly skilled person to keep them in tune. So we'll hear more about that tomorrow. And it's our Thursday virtual family fun day. We have a guest from the Houston Museum uh, Health Museum who will give us a virtual visit inside the human body. We hope. Maybe. We'll see. I'm sure they'll have some good stuff to show us. They are a very cool museum. Kyle, thanks for being here on the show today. Thanks so much, Todd. It was a pleasure being here. And make sure you join Kyle every week for the student newscast. What's your cast newscast called? The HCC TV Student Lounge. Actually, since we were talking about the safety measures for the fall, we did a special episode that we're going to be releasing this Thursday that we're talking exactly about that. Everything that we HCC is doing to help students. And we also have a lot of information for students there, you know, uh, worried about how they're going to take the classes, what they can do, how they can get in contact with the admissions. So we have all the information in there. And if you students should definitely check that out because you're going to feel more comfortable to even go into class or restroom for the fall. So watch that tomorrow. We'll be posting it in our social media. It'll be on our YouTube channel. You can check it out here on Facebook. Thanks for being with us here on Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you tomorrow live at 10 a.m.